their patients. So most of that is going to be spent on inspection. I, I haven't seen that uh, that is going to be pushed forward for PPE, which maybe really is the thing there, to PPE and continued education for these skilled nursing facility employees. Yeah, they're also going to be reporting to the CDC the numbers and such, so it'll be monitored a little more closely. I want to switch a story really quick with you. Um, there is a lot of concern, obviously, over the lockdowns that are in place and how our country and other countries are handling the outbreak. Um, and there's a lot of discussion about it. I want to play something for you. This is what a doctor at the World Health Organization said about specifically the country of Sweden. I think if we are to reach a new normal, I think I think in many ways Sweden represents uh, a future model of if we wish to get back to a society in which we don't have lockdowns, then society may need to adapt for a, a, a medium or potentially a longer period of time in which our physical and social relationships with each other will have to be moder modulated by uh, the presence of the virus. So, Doctor, Sweden isn't without deaths. Uh, I want to be clear about that. However, the country is getting the spotlight because they're not under a lockdown in that country. They have done things completely differently. Um, but we are told they are implementing their own rules, regulations with their people, their voluntarily social distancing and, and other measures that are being taken. What is there anything to learn from Sweden? Yeah, I think that there's a couple of things that we can look at. And, and, and one, we have to remember that this is a very different uh, scenario for much of us. Sweden isn't New York, but Sweden also isn't New Mexico. And so when we look at the population density, that's that's a big factor that we know. But uh, so getting to herd immunity, and that's kind of what Sweden's um, uh, big advocation is right now, is herd immunity. Uh, that's obviously the answer, but is the way that Sweden did it right? I think for some areas it may be a reasonable solution, but not for others. And that's why I've, I've said all along that we need to be looking at these things geographically and regionally, because what's the right answer for New York is not the right answer for New Mexico or Utah, for instance. And so can we learn from Sweden? Absolutely. We, uh, but I don't think that they are the answer. I think that we need to um, continue to gather information from all of these scenarios all, all over the world and especially regionally within the United States and, and continue to analyze because what we don't want, we don't want a repeat of this in the fall or next spring with a, a forced quarantine, a forced lockdown across the country that just stifles individuals and it stifles the economy so greatly. Yeah, that's the other question is because if doctors are saying, hey, look, this thing will not stop for, until 60 to 70 percent of our population has been infected. It could possibly be around for the next two years um, without a vaccine. So what really is the answer once you let them out? You know, will this continue to spread? Then you kind of come back in. Um, that's a conversation for another time. We're out of time. But that is Dr. Jonathan Baugh. Uh, he's a chief medical officer at Remote Health Solutions. Good to see you, sir. Uh, have a great week and stay safe. Meanwhile, the president says he has.